Hi, I'm Jenner Burr, the Inquiring Quilter, and uh, Always in Stitches and has invited me here today to talk about my new Batik collection for Island Batik. Now, some of you may not know a lot about how fabric collections come into a store, and I can share what I know and tell you a little bit about that today, and also share the loveliness that is my first Island Batik collection. First of all, the collection is called Reflections. And let's back up and talk about batiks for a second. You may not know, but batiks are handmade. For island batiks, they're handmade in Bali. And what that means is they have artisans there that will hand dye the uh, batiks. They will uh, coat them with wax in order to create designs and then boil the fabric to get the uh, the wax off and then repeat and repeat until they have layered the colors in the way that um, best creates the design that they had in mind. So if you take a look at the, uh, the collection, it has a beautiful range of purples, blues, a couple of red violets, some greens, and then some mixed uh, patterns. And these are created by, again, first dyeing the fabric with a color and then um, printing, uh, imprinting the, the motif on there using a something that's called a chop, which uh, prints the, the, the design in wax. That prevents the next color from going in that spot. So in this case, they might have dyed it a light purple and then they over dyed it with a dark blue purple, uh, which did not get in this spot. And so this spot, uh, when you remove the wax, uh, shows the design. Now at Island Boutique, they have an on staff uh, designer who is an expert at understanding which colors can be reproduced uh, using the traditional boutique method, and also which designs can be imprinted on that boutique. Um, as an island boutique designer, my duty is to work with them to find the best collection that reflects my design aesthetic and that excites me and wants me to create uh, quilts that bring out the beauty of that collection. One of those quilts is this one here. This is called Broken Road. And currently I've got a quilt along where you can quilt with me and make this quilt. Uh, Broken Road, my Broken Road pattern comes in a couple of sizes. I've got uh, Broken Road Mini, which comes in this smaller size and a wall size. And then I have Broken Road, which comes in uh, twin, double, and queen. And so if you want to join the quilt along, we'll have a link in the dis video description so that you can join us and maybe win some of this beautiful collection. Now I am, I would say I'm an authority on batiks. I have, uh, I started out as an Island Batik ambassador for six years. And as an ambassador, you get sent a lot of batiks. Think um, Christmas two times a year, I would get uh, several boxes of batiks and, and, and other things to help make um, quilts. And then every month we were challenged to make a, a new quilt using the Island Batiks. So I got very familiar with their product and also very familiar with designing for batiks. Um, after I stopped doing the ambassador program, because it is intensive, because every month you're coming up with a new design and making a quilt um, for uh, the, cha the monthly challenge, um, I became a, a, an Island Batik designer. Now what that means is I have a, um, a signature collection um, and then I design quilts for that collection. Again, that reflects the beauty of the collection. If you've ever uh, had trouble trying to figure out you like a quilt but you're not sure what colors to use in it or whatever, that doesn't seem to be my, my problem. <laughs> my problem is simply finding the time to make all the quilts that I can imagine in my mind. 
Um, but as a designer, what I do is I, um, it's up to me to try to show you how to best use the fabrics that you've fallen in love with when you walked into the door. Um, Always in Stitches is carrying several of my patterns and also I have loaned them a trunk show. So um, in a moment we'll go back and take a look at those quilts. So this is Emerald Lodge, and as you can see, it really shows off the beauties of the greens and the red violets, and then finally the darker violets and blues in the collection. Um, Emerald Lodge was actually originally designed for a different collection, and on the back of the pattern, it shows what Emerald Lodge looks like in warm, browns and dark greens. So if, remember before I was talking about some people don't, uh, some people have a problem reimagining a quilt and the colors they like? If you're not attracted to the colors in this collection, but I'm sorry, who wouldn't be? But if you're not, if there is another design selection on the back of my patterns. So I like to do that because I realize that that is one of the hardest things as a quilter, to figure out how to, what pattern can you use to show off this fabric collection that you've fallen in love with. Now one of the things about Emerald Lodge, it's a fairly simple pattern. Um, it's really just the bare paw um, block with a couple of variations. Um, there is some uh, small, foundation paper piecing for one section of the block, which is this over here. As you can see, there's only three parts to that foundation paper piece block, so it's really, really simple. So if you would like to add this skill to your toolbox, this is a great pattern to do it with. Um, the other thing I want to point out is just uh, that uh, we use this beautiful gold thread. Now you may have thought, why gold? Because there's no gold in the quilt anywhere. Well, the, what happens with this gold thread is it kind of changes color as it moves across the quilt. And it complements especially those yellow greens, which are the thing that you see first when you look at, at Emerald Lodge. So that is one of the things that uh, me and my long armor discussed. And uh, I we kind of chose this, this gold thread, which I think really worked out quite well. And it's such a beautiful complement to the purples. But look at what it looks like on the greens. It's such a lovely, uh, lovely color. And I think that's just something that I've always been able to do is to see color in my head and see how to best show it off, which is what makes me so excited about uh, having an Island Boutique collection where I can really uh, bring my talents to bear and, and uh, create quilts that reflect the beauty of, of reflections. Now we've got a couple other quilts I want to show you. So let's talk about the second quilt that I designed for reflections. And it's this one here. It's called Greek Mosaic. And as, as you can see, it might remind you of, well, it's a Greek key block. To me, it kind of looked like Greek tiles, which is where I got the name. And uh, it's very planned as far as which blocks you make and in what colorways. But once again, if you are not attracted to the purples and greens and red violets of reflections, um, then I, I think you need to see a doctor because I'm not quite sure what's the matter, but no. Um, if you're not uh, on the back of the pattern, it does show you a couple of other suggested colorways. So you can find fabrics in these colors here at Always in Stitches and make the quilt that you want. Um, for uh, Greek mosaic, it's very simple piecing. It's uh, you piece these uh, individual quarters of the block and then you sew the four quarters together. It's kind of like making a log cabin. So it's uh, very uh, easy. However, I will point out that it's an on-point quilt, which means that you're going to be setting the blocks this way. You sew them together in rows, and then you sew these little triangles on the side. 
Now, if you've never done an on-point quilt, some people think that they're complicated, but in my case, as a designer, I've taken that into consideration, and these triangles that you're sewing on are gonna be larger than you need. So that means that when you come to square up your quilt and add the final borders, you're gonna be successful. So that's Greek mosaic. Let's go on to the final uh, quilt that we have for my now, collection. some of the techniques that we were talking about with how the block construction is and mm -hmm. how you're sewing them in rows and triangles and things like that, um, what kind of stuff do you get into on your podcast? Well, uh, on my podcast, uh, I have started with the quilting basics. So if you are a beginning quilter, you'll want to check out my podcast on YouTube. I start with things that you may or may not have been taught in your first quilting class. For me, when I think back, I was taught how to make the quilt and it was different blocks, and each block was a, you know, just maybe slightly more difficult. So it was a very instructive class. But some of the things they didn't really focus on, except very lightly, included techniques that you use every day in quilting, like pressing properly. If you've been wondering, why aren't my blocks coming out the right size? Why are they kind of skewed a little bit? Why do they, why do my quilts ripple on the side? It might be pressing, or it could be that you're having trouble cutting accurately. That's another skill that you have to master that is kind of covered only lightly in most classes. And then finally, there's the third skill that you have to master as a quilter, and that's sewing accurately a quarter inch. So on my podcast, that's where we've started with these basic skills. And also, I should mention that here at Always in Stitches, I teach those classes as well. And in the fall, I'm going to be repeating this series. So if you missed the first time I taught my Quilt Basics class, which started with um, uh, pressing properly and then cutting and then sewing accurately, well, uh, watch for the newsletter because you'll be invited to uh, sign up for the fall version of that, of that class series. Um, but that's what my podcast is, and we will link to that in the video description so that you can subscribe. And uh, I will tell you, if you follow Always in Stitches, that um, Dawn is featured in my uh, podcast, and uh, we have a lot of fun together. So if you like seeing Dawn, then you really need to check it out on YouTube if you haven't already. And uh, like I said, you can subscribe so that when we put new episodes on of the podcast, you'll be notified and you'll be able to go check them out. Awesome. What else do we have over here in your um, trunk show? Yeah, we have one more um, uh, quilt and this one is called Snake Eyes. Um, I, I named it that because, well, my husband actually helped me name it. He looked at it and said it looked like dice going back and forth, and a uh, rolling dice. Uh, so he said, hey, you should call it Snake Eyes. Now, this particular collection is, um, yeah, and I should mention that on the back, if you don't like the light version, there is a dark version Ooh. on the back, so you can see what it would look like if you did it in black. And I think the black really kind of pops those bright uh, purples, the bright greens, um, and really makes that such a lovely quilt. But um, you can also make this in any collection that you like. It is designed to feature an entire collection. So you use um, fat quarters uh, to, to make this. So if you've got a fat quarter collection that's sitting around and you're not sure what to do with it, Snake yeah, Eyes is a very, very good like quilt to do. Little, and it's also it. fun. Okay. Um, you as you can see, pound. the blocks kind okay. of tilt. And okay. the way you get them to tilt is you sew this that. center part of the block and then you're sewing essentially triangles on the, on the sides. Thank you. Well, I make those triangles really big, so when you go to Hello. square Hello. up the block and trim it to the correct size, again, you'll be, it's very easy and very successful. But the way I've planned it out in the pattern, I show you exactly how much to cut from each of your fat quarters so that you can use them up and uh, also distribute them in a good way throughout the quilt so that the quilt itself will look like a unified whole and not just a couple of green blocks over here and a couple of blue blocks down here. 
Um, so that's what's fun about snake eyes. And it goes, I, I found that it went to get very, very fast. So I would rate it as like a confident beginner, possibly intermediate because you do have to trim your blocks and get them to tilt, but uh, it's a very easy uh, quilt to make and I think you'd really enjoy it. It also shows off the beauty of this collection, but it will show off the, the beauty of any other fat quarter collection you have. And if um, <laughs> viewers have any questions about what you showed them today or the quilts or um, any questions, uh, what email can you be reached at? Uh, you can reach me online or uh, at my website, which is inquiringquilter.com. And that's I-N-Q-U-I-R-I-N-G, quilter.com. Or you can email me at jennifer.fulton at inquiringquilter.com. Uh, we'll put the links in again in the video description so that you can reach out when you want. Um, let me just explain a little bit more about what I do so you might uh, know what you can find if you decide to follow me. First of all, I am very much into batiks. And if you've never worked with batiks before, um, I can tell you exactly how to use them to their best um, ability, <laughs> uh, what types of needles you would need, what, you know, if you need any special equipment, if there's any techniques for pressing or whatever that you need to know for batiks. I've got a couple of videos on my YouTube channel uh, under Intelligent Quilting that will show you exactly how to use batik. So if you're interested and you never have, I can show you how. Um, in addition to that, I'm focused on teaching quilting. So with my podcast, I'm teaching the basics, but also when you follow me, um, I will be showing you tips and tricks for the different blocks and things that I'm making. If you decide to subscribe to my newsletter, you will instantly get a free block pattern. And then every month I get a free block pattern to my newsletter subscribers as kind of a thank you. So if you wanna do that, um, again, we'll link to that down below. Um, I not only design, and, and, and have collections with Island Batik. I've got another one coming out in the fall that oh, you, you have got to see, it is so beautiful. Um, I also teach classes here at Always in Stitches and online. I have a quilting membership, so if you want to focus on quilting but also have community and you, don't, you can't really get out and about very much, uh, it's a wonderful alternative to meet friends from all over the world online. All of that information, again, will be in the video description so you can learn more about me and I hope to learn more about you. So to end on a funny note, so we used to work together, you and I. Yes. And um, I remember when I started working here and you were working here. And I do remember that um, if customers came in and they had a math question or, or I want to make this larger, I want to add more blocks to make it this size, or I don't want to do a four inch border, I want to do a six inch border, how much of this fabric do I need? You were definitely the person to go to. You were like the go-to math person. You could figure it out. Yeah, I think that's, that's maybe why I'm well suited to the business that I've created. Um, uh, I, I can do the quilty math in my head. It's no big deal. Um, but I re recognize that for most people that is not uh, maybe their, their chief skill. Uh, as also, you know, choosing the right colors and, and uh, fabrics to go in a particular part of a quilt. Uh, they used to call me out on the floor all the time for those types of questions too. I was kind of the answer girl, I guess. <laughs> But uh, thanks for bringing that up, yeah. <laughs> Peter. That's nice. <laughs> well, this was a definitely a wonderful visit. We're so happy to have you in the shop to talk about your new Island Batik collection and your uh, quilts that you invested a lot of time, energy, and effort in designing for that yeah. collection. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that you had me, and I hope that everybody that watches this video will come to Always in Stitches, not just to buy my collection. I mean, I hope that's why you come. Um, and my patterns, of course, but also to support the shop. Um, you need to support your local quilt shop, and this is the one to support because you want this quilt shop to be here for you. They carry lots of lovely fabrics, but other things as well. So if, like me, you have other skills like cross-stitch or knitting or crochet or whatever, um, they have those too, so please drop by. It is a destination shop. You will just be blown away by how much you can find here at Always in Stitches. So thank you again, Peter, for having me and, and Cappy. And, and I really enjoy having worked at Always in Stitches. And now I'm being featured at Always in Stitches. So that's just fun, too.